51 UFO interceptor. This is a this is a toy belonging to a friend of mine who's commissioned me to turn this into a theatrical version or the version that was played on TV. He wonders, and I wonder, uh, what possessed them to make the UFO interceptor green and orange, and he would like to have one white. Now I know they made white ones later, but he has the green one and he would like me to convert it into one that looks like the TV theatrical one. So I'm going to give it a go. So first of all, we want to uh, take the parts off. Oop, there goes the rocket, or torpedo I guess. And this is in remarkably good condition, and he could probably sell it, and we discussed it. But He's not interested. He would like to get this. Uh, originally he bought it because he loved the Interceptor and he wants something for his shelf that's a display piece and the green and orange isn't cutting it. So this one I don't have to drill out any rivets to get it apart. We just take off some screws. And This one, there's a little bit of trouble getting that off because those rockets that are pointing forward get hung up on the casting so we've got to be careful. The man is inside, he's in good condition and the mechanism it's obviously working. It's actually pretty simple when you look at it and two screws and it comes apart and all the pieces work in conjunction. It's brilliantly designed. It's got the spring switch or the latch and I'm, watch, I'm looking at it carefully. I want to make sure I'm going to be able to put this thing back together again. Oop, and pops right off. And to get that front leg off, you just turn it 90 degrees. Now the plan is to print, uh, or to copy these uh, on the computer, and then print the 3D print them, because these are kind of a soft plastic, and I'm concerned that they won't hold the paint very well. Now these are splayed out and this is a common thing with these. So I'm just melting the plastic a tiny bit and bending it back so that it's going to sit uh, nice and level and, and proper. And I think these things just get splayed out because they're played with heavily or maybe over time they, they settle. But it didn't take much. I'm using the little jet lighter. It's like a little torch and there I got them in pretty short order. So now I'm going to take the rivets off of here. So these, these ones aren't held with screws, they're held with rivets. And I'm going to try and drill it out first. And what I'm doing is I'm using
a 256 drill because it's a very small post and here's one that's been ground the points been ground off so I can go deeper so that my thread goes deeper so that my screw can go all the way in so there's a tiny little 256 screw they're about the same size as a number uh, M2 metric screw same dimensions of course different thread and different thread pitch but it's very very close if you saw two side by side you'd be mixing them up so I put those in so as I paint the model they get the paint of the body color now there's some you know some flashing on the castings that they left there they're not they're not bad but I figure I'm in there I might as well clean it up because I'm going to be painting this now you notice I'm not stripping the paint that's because it's in such good condition uh, it saves me from having to prime it so what I'll do is clean off all those imperfections with the file and then I'm going to soft or, or rough up the paint uh, with wet sanding. First I gotta get these stickers off. It's funny the one sticker is faded this one's very faded and the one on the other side is quite orangey reddish. I don't know if this thing was sitting in a display somewhere and the light was shining on the one side. See this one's much much darker. Of course I feel bad doing this. I'm sure people think I'm a heretic because the model is in such good condition you could sell for $150. I don't know. I see them for $300 in that condition. So don't want to lose this sticker so I put it on my toolbox. So now I'm going to rough up the paint a little bit so that it'll it'll take the color and I'm just using a wet sandpaper. It's the micro mesh paper that you might have seen me using before. cut out a piece which shows how many drops I put but I put more drops and I'm showing here 
and it makes it a little more orange. And then I'm mixing in the Mr. Hobby plain thinner, not the not the slow drying one because it's not going to be shiny. It doesn't need to be shiny. I want it to dry quickly so that it doesn't have a chance to go under the tape. And I'm going with my old airbrush. This is the one that you hold in your hand and the pump and the battery is in there. And I really like this thing. Unfortunately, the thing starts acting up on me. In this case, I didn't mind. It was not blowing properly. The the battery was not charged properly. It took me a long time to get to this point, but the idea is that I put on very fine layers so they all dry before they have a chance to get liquidy and slip under the tape. So it's my first time doing this method and I'm optimistic that it's going to work. So now we're going to find out. That's making me feel good. It's making perfect line. You cannot see. Any Very enjoyable because it worked so perfectly. have it perfect lines now this is something I bought mr. masking Saul is uh, it's kind of a rubbery stuff that you paint on and I'm because I'm worried about again I have to paint uh, silver around the engine cowlings and I don't want to get the red stripe damage so I'm giving this try for the first time and then tape going over top so that the silver cowling won't spread onto the white. So this is first time using this stuff so I'm, I'm hoping that this will be another way of preventing because uh, that red is the aqueous paint and I don't want the tape to pull it off. So this I'm using the uh,
airbrushing is kind of new. This part gets silver. I forgot about it, so I quickly did it. Now the back of the retro rockets need to be black because there's exhaust coming from there. So I'm using I'm using the Tamiya flat black paint. I use this tiny brush. This is a Tamiya brush. It's a it's an expensive little brush, but it lets me get in to the small areas. And now I'm going to leave a little bit of the silver. So when you look into the into the main rocket engine, you'll see a little bit of that silver. I don't want it all the silver. I want it to look like there's a frame and then there's the black part. So I'll leave the frame with that chrome, plastic chrome. And if anybody looks down into the business end of the rocket engine, they're going to see at least the, the frame showing. Now to the rocket, I'm trying out this uh, Mr. Hobby base coat. Um, I was thinking it's like a primer but it's not very good so I go switch over to the flat white paint and primer which is what I painted the body with and I think it's There's a lot of little junk uh, that you can't really even see on the TV screen. Um, little things. It's like a it's like a fighter aircraft would have all these little descriptions and things to tell people what to watch out for and where the fuel goes in. And so I I, I just put a few things there because it needs to have that to give it the realistic look. This is the prime one on it because.
and it's not on the theatrical version, but I added shadow on it because I'm kind of halfway between the dinky version and the TV version. So now everything is painted, everything is ready to reassemble, and I'll get those screws out. You can see they've been painted white in the process of painting the whole body. And my friend has the the uh, 3D printer, so he'll be able to take those off if he wants um, and, and figure out how to uh, scan those so he can make a printout. He ran out of time and I wanted to get the model done, so that's his option because he's going to have it. Then he can take those off and figure out how to make a 3D version and then I can paint it up for him, no problem. So now we've got to get the mechanism back together for launching the rocket. And all these pieces kind of work in unison. And this is very clever too. The, that crossbar uh, has a little, a little pin that sticks down and it stops you from taking that uh, ski off the front. So there's the little launch pusher. And here's the spring. And this is a tricky thing. I had to try this a couple times. Because that uh, launch switch uh, f has a little pin that sticks up and it pivots between that capping plate and the body. So it's kind of, you need to have three or four hands to do this, like, easily. So I tighten down those screws and that holds it all together. And from there, we'll be ready to put the top on, or put this onto the top, I suppose. So there's the body. We get the uh, windshield into place first, and then that whole big string of parts that shows the front hood and the cockpit. And then it's a little bit of a trick to get those retro rockets in. And I scratched a little bit on the casting. There's no way to do it. I don't know how they did it in the factory. Maybe they had a special tool for it. Uh, but I just touched up the paint afterwards. So we got that in there. And now we can put the base back on. And I painted the screw heads because I didn't put it back on the ca the screws back on the casting. So I painted them separately so they'd be white as well. Now one thing about this model Jerry and Sylvie Anderson came up with beautiful models for their shows. They were very sexy. I don't know if they did design them or their designers did, but this uh, Interceptor reminds me of my dad's first car. It's a 1947 Mercury Monarch. Look at the fenders in the front grill. This picture was taken in 1955. When you compare it with the Interceptor, it seems like a match to me. Now this is how we started out green with orange legs and I'll just let you watch and you'll see how it comes out in the end. So we'll see you next time. FAB. Oh wait, that's Thunderbirds. <laughs>